Hi everyone and welcome to Hawaiian Design. My name is Kimberly and I'm your instructor for today. So starting off with what we have in front of us, we have our colors. I have this really big palette here today. Um, the colors that we have are going to be yellow, red, and blue. We're gonna be having black and white, a little bit of brown, and some magenta or fuchsia. Okay, so if you guys happen to not have this color, just mix a little bit of blue and yellow to your red and you'll get the equivalent of this color right here. Um, if you don't have the magenta, you can continue to just use uh, some red and you should be fine with that. You don't necessarily have to use a magenta. Okay, so um, we have our paint right here. Next, we have our palette. My palette's an 11 by 14 size, not palette, I'm sorry, canvas. And we have it long ways. Then we have a fan. If uh, We are going to be painting in layers, so a fan is important that you have. If you have an outlet nearby, you can also use a hair dryer. Also, make sure you have a towel, some water for your brushes, and your brushes. The brushes we're going to be using today are going to be our large background brush, our medium square brush, our round tip brush, and our detail brush. Okay, so these are the brushes that I tend to use in all of my classes. Um, so if you have a bigger canvas, as long as you have the same type of brush, you'll be fine. If you have a smaller canvas, um, same thing. These brushes to actually be fine for a smaller canvas um, as well. So we're gonna be starting off and like always, our paint is not ready to use yet. Just because we got it out of the container doesn't mean that we can use it already. So quick note, make sure that you guys keep an eye on how much water you're applying to your paint. We want to make sure that we get our paint a little bit softer. This is the consistency of toothpaste, so we want to get it a little bit more like sour cream, nice and smooth. One, so that we don't struggle, and two, so that we don't waste a lot of paint. Next, make sure that you don't add too much water so that it's not overwatered and flowing all over the place, okay? We want to make sure that um, we uh, can, can keep control of our paint. If our paint is a little too watery, we're not going to be able to control it very well. It's going to be going all over the place and it's going to leave kind of a mess, okay? So make sure that you keep an eye on the balance of your paint, okay? So another thing, your brush is like a sponge. So the moment that you dip that into your water, it's going to get super full of water. And when you squeeze down, your water is going to come out uh, a lot. So you want to make sure that you use the hairs of your brush to make sure that your water is really well blended into your paint. Um, that way you don't get a, mis a, a, a little explosion of water on your canvas while you're painting, okay? So we want to make sure that we um, mix it very well. All right, so we're gonna be starting off first with our yellow. So we're gonna come in, we're gonna pick up our large background brush, we're gonna dip it in our water. And like always, I like to come to the side of my paint. I don't like to use all of it, just in case I wanna use some later. Um, and I like to come into the side and just mix my color there. Okay, so we're gonna come in, make sure that again, you have enough water, so squeeze your brush so that you get all the water out of your brush onto your palette. That way you can make sure that it is fully mixed in. Okay, so I'm coming back with a little bit more of that water. Also, when you mix paint, right now we're going to go in and we're going to cover about more than half of our canvas, okay? So you want to make sure that when you're mixing your, your paint, you have enough paint that's going to last you throughout all of that, or else you're going to have to go back and continue to mix it as you go along. There's nothing wrong with that. However, it is going to consume a little bit more time. Okay, so the highest we're going to go with this is going to be about maybe right here. And we're going to do it sort of like in an angle. Okay, so imagine you're cutting your canvas in half. Go a little bit above it, about maybe three, four fingers worth and we're gonna paint our yellow in that angle, okay? So we're gonna come in and let's start f filling in our bottom of our canvas with that yellow.
All right, once we start to get to the top here, we're gonna go into our yellow. Make sure that you add a good amount of water to that again. And this time we're gonna go in and pick up a slight bit of red and we're gonna mix it into our yellow to make a orange. Okay, so this orange, we're gonna bring it in and we're gonna start to scratch it over the top. We're not gonna press very hard. We're gonna go very lightly over the top of it. Make sure that, again, you have plenty of uh, water in there. Then I'm gonna ask you guys to come back with a little bit more yellow so that this looks like it's blended in closer to our yellow than it is, okay? So we painted that part first. So we're gonna come in and we're just gonna make these really thin scratches, making it look like it's fading into that. We're not gonna go in and fill all of it. Okay. Right above this, you're gonna come in with just a slight hint of that magenta or that fuchsia. If you don't have that color, come in with your red on the side, mix in a little bit of yellow and a tad bit of that blue, and then add some white to it and you should get the equivalent of that same type of magenta. See that? So it's red with some yellow, blue, and white. Just a little drop of blue, you don't need much. Okay. So you're gonna add that magenta over the top here, and we're gonna slightly blend it into that orange very lightly. Again, if you don't have magenta, that's the way that you mix it. You use, you basically make a purple, right, by combining some blue and some red. Just a little drop of blue. And then you mix in some, uh, some yellow to make it, to add a little bit of a brightness to it. And then you add white to lighten it up and to bring it back from that um, original color that we were using there, to bring it back up to a brighter, lighter magenta. Okay, so then I'm gonna grab a little bit more of this yellow and I'm gonna go into my orange a little bit with my yellow. Okay. And remember the mixtures that we did right now were some of that orange, um, some of that magenta over the top. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna come in with a little bit more yellow. That way, it looks like we actually faded it down instead of it looking like we have different lines. If you see that you're starting to get this difference, like I am right there, okay? Come in and just go over it very lightly, wherever that line is, and you should be able to erase that line without that much of a difficulty. Again, it all has to do with your pressure. If you're pressing very hard, you're gonna get lines because you're squeezing all of the paint on the sides of your brush. Therefore, you're leaving all these streaks behind, okay? If you press a little bit lighter, you're kind of just blending everything together. So kind of pay attention to the pressure that you apply. Once we have finished that, we're gonna come back with a little bit of water and our round tip brush. And we're gonna add that water to the red. So what we're gonna begin to do now is we're gonna draw our horizon line. What is the horizon line? The horizon line is where the sky meets the ground, where the top meets the bottom. Okay, it's what you see when you look into the horizon. So we're gonna come in, and here we're gonna try to make our line a little bit straighter, okay? So we're gonna come in, we do wanna leave, we're gonna go at about maybe a little bit under half of our canvas, so cut your canvas in half, and then go just a little bit lower.
If at any point you feel that your water is too dirty, um, feel free to get up and change your water. We are going to be working with lighter colors and we are going to be going back and forth between our light and our dark colors. So make sure that you get up and change that water so you always have clean water while you're working. Okay. So next I'm going to be washing off my round tip and I'm going to be actually picking up some white now. Okay, so I'm adding some water to that. white and right here right in the middle we're going to outline half of a setting sun okay so our sun is going down a little bit this is such a pretty picture too it's super colorful it's really nice. I like this picture. Thank you guys so, so much for joining me too, by the way. All right. Okay, so right above this, we're gonna grab our large background brush. We're gonna dip that in our water. And we're gonna pick up some blue. Okay, so again, we're coming in with that background brush and we are gonna pick up some blue and we're gonna paint the top of our sky that blue. As we go higher towards the top, we're gonna begin to also add some black to our blue to get it just a hint darker. Okay, so I am adding a drop of this black, mixing it into my blue so I can get a more of a navy blue. Okay, that's the color we're using right there. It's a deep navy. And we're gonna start to paint the top with that darker blue. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes to do the sun, to paint this blue in. You can also bring that blue slightly into your orange. Just make a couple of lines. And I love how pretty that looks. All right, guys, so moving on. Hopefully you guys are done with this. We're gonna start playing with the bottom section. So we're gonna be using our round tip brush while we still allow our top to dry. And we're gonna be picking up some orange first, okay? Or you know what, no, let's pick up our red. So we're gonna be using our detail brush. We're gonna come in and pick up some of this red and we're gonna also add a little bit of white to it so that it's not too dramatic okay so right there we're playing with a pink okay so we got red with white mixed it together and we have a pink so what are we going to be doing with this pink 
We're gonna start to outline the design of a heart right in the middle, okay? So I like to tell you guys how to do this, but at the end of the day, I also like to tell you that it is your painting. So you guys feel free to get inspired, use the colors that you want. Um, you can follow along my instructions, but you can use any colors that you'd like. It doesn't have to exactly be like mine, okay? I love to encourage you guys to put your own style into this and just kind of make it your own, okay? So starting off, we're going to start with the point where our heart is going to be. And from here, we're going to start to make our lines a little bit bigger, okay? So we're going to start to make the shape of a heart there. Okay, so if you want to kind of outline it a little bit, you can, at least the top. Okay, and then as we go down, I'm going to put some lines first. I'm going to go a little bit wider. And we're going to start to draw a heart out. See that? We already have half of a heart right there. And we're going to do the outline of the heart on the left side as well. Okay, so these lines, we're going to be bringing them across and we're going to start to just create these ripples kind of. So I'm picking up my pink and I'm leaving some space in between. I'm not just filling them in with the pink. See that? I'm not filling in all of my water with this pink. I'm making short lines and then I'm going in between each of those lines to continue to add these ripples to them. We're not going to be filling the inside with this pink. We're going to be keeping the pink on the outside. Okay, and we're going to continue to spread this pink all around. Again, so I went in with a little bit more white, added it to my pink. And I added just another layer of highlight over that pink that I put there originally. Okay, and I did that all around to bring it another level up.
All right, so moving on, the next color that we're going to be using is going to be an orange. So how do you make orange? You mix a little bit of that yellow into your red. If you already still have some from what was left over up here, then you can go ahead and use that. And the colors we're going to be using again are going to be orange. And we're going to be filling in the center of our heart with orange, yellow, and white. So we're going to go in and we're going to make... That needs a little bit more yellow on it. Make sure that your orange is not too dark. We don't really want it to be that dark. And we're just gonna start making these little waves inside of that section. So we're coming in and we're making just some waves with our round tip. Okay, we're going in. Make sure you leave some yellow spaces there still. And we're just going to be applying these little lines to make it look as if we have some ripples there. Make it look as if they're coming in from the pink so you can bring in some of that orange into the edges a little bit. Okay. After you added some of that orange, you can come back with a little bit more yellow and you can add just a little bit more of that yellow to start creating some more variety of color. That way you can blend more with your orange since your orange is still wet. And again, I'm just making these lines. Okay, you can even have a little bit of this heart flowing into the sides there. And it can look as if the water's just magically created this. The next, we're gonna be getting just a little bit of white. Make sure you wash off your brush. We're gonna pick up a little bit of that white and we're gonna to start to create some lines with our white as well.
and we're adding that white to make it look as if we have some waves. Okay, so they're going to be kind of curvy. Awesome. So from there, we're going to continue to use this orange. And it's going to be plenty of red mixed in with our yellow. And this is going to be more of a darker orange. And we're going to start to draw this orange in between these pink lines. Okay, so we're going to start to bring in some of that orange again into these pink lines in here. Okay, we're going for a deep orange again. And we're going to start doing the lines just like we did the pink. We're going to be using our orange for that now. So from this orange, we're going to come in and we're going to add a little bit of brown into it. Okay, we want to bring that orange down a notch. We want to make it just a little bit darker. So we're going to be picking up a little bit of our brown and we're going to be mixing it into our orange. So make sure that you get plenty of red in there. And that way we can get a darker orange. Look at that. Really nice. I really like that color. Let's pick up a little bit more of that brown. Let's add a little bit more yellow. Okay, and we're not gonna use a lot of this color. We're just gonna use it to define the edges and that way it looks a little bit more shadowed in. So we're gonna come in and we're just gonna scratch that brown orange again. You might need a little bit more yellow. If it looks too chocolate brown, come back with a little bit more yellow. Okay, we're looking for an orange that looks a little bit like that. You see how dark that is? Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to start to drag it in from the sides. We're going to start to make these lines on those edges there. And we're going to start just to scratch this in. You can do some lines so that it looks like it's a little bit more natural. Okay, we want to bring those dark colors off of the sides. And we're just going to use it to outline the sides, the bottom a little bit, and then the other side a little bit more.
we're going to continue to do that. I did add just a little drop of black in there into that dark brown that I made just so that I can add one more layer of that dark color. And this one is not going so much into the right. It's just kind of staying there at that edge, but I do want to make it just a little bit more shadowed in the corners right here. See how we see some of that yellow. We want to go over that. We don't want to see any of those highlights in the edges. We want to make sure that it's nice and covered. So the final layer that I'm adding there of that dark color is going to be just a little bit of black mixed in with my brown to take it a notch darker. Okay, and we're gonna keep this up. moving on we are going to begin to use our detail brush and we are going to be adding some more detail colors in this so we're going to be using a very light pink we're going to be using some blue okay so starting off with our light pink we're going to add some of that red into our white and we are going to go very very light with this color okay and what we're trying to do is just bring out some of these lines. So I'm coming back in there, maybe a little bit more white. Okay, here we go. We want them to stand out. All right, here we go. And we're just gonna add some of that pink. And with our detail brush, we're gonna begin to make it look a little bit more like waves. Okay, so I want you guys to come in and kind of swirl your brush as you're bringing it into the right. So I want you to kind of wave it. Okay, we're not trying to add a lot of detail. We're just trying to do a little bit. nice and fine and we're going to go around doing that with these um with this detail brush with this very light color we're going to continue to do that all around after we use our pink we're going to do the same thing but we're going to be using some blue okay so after you guys see me use this pink you're going to see that i'm going to start to add some water to my blue and that's what i'm going to be using in here also, it's not going to be too compressed. It's not going to be that many li lines. It's not going to be super dark. It's just going to be nice and light over the top.
guys so moving on we are going to be working on the bottom brush and then we're going to be completely dedicating ourselves to the top of our sky so starting off with our brush the colors that we're going to be using for this are going to be black so get your palette make sure that you get your round brush and you can use both your round and your detail brush i will be doing some thicker strands first with my round tip and then I'll be adding some details with my liner brush my detail so I'm going to come in and add a little bit of water again I'm using the side of my paint okay making sure that I have enough water in there And then I'm going to wash off my brush. I'm going to dry it a little bit, tap it dry. And then I'm going to come back and pick up this black. Just because I don't want to overload my brush with it and then have my brush super chunky with paint. Okay, we're going to be making uh, uh, some really fine lines. So we need to make sure that we don't have that much paint on our brush while we're doing this. And I'm going to start from my left, work my way towards my right. And we're gonna start off a little bit lower than our horizon line. So about maybe right there. It's about a finger or two from the left down from the horizon line. And we're just gonna come and release our pressure. In order to get a fine line, you press hard at first to get the paint out of your brush. And then you move your brush farther and farther away from your canvas to get a thin line, okay? So you push a little harder and then you press a little less hard. You go a little lighter as you release your pressure. So we're gonna come in and we are gonna do some more of these lines, okay? Again, I am gonna go in there with my detail brush and add some finer ones. And at first we are gonna have some nice thick lines coming out from the sides. These are larger leaves. And we're gonna have one sort of going straight up here. And this one is gonna have an oval and a little line from the top. Okay. And we're gonna have a couple of those here. We're gonna have another one that's a little thicker. It's gonna be another little oval and it has another line on top of it. Okay, there we go, an oval and another line right above it. Okay, and you can go in and add several thick lines from the bottom up before we come in with our finer brush and add some slow some thinner lines and we're going to do this all around the bottom same thing on our right we're going to be coming in with some thicker leaves we are going to have the same thing with our oval and our line and again i'm going to do this with my thicker brush first and then i'm going to go in there with my thinner brush and I'm going to add some finer details, some finer lines. Okay, so we're going to continue this nice and small in the bottom and it's going to be a little bit bigger off to the side with the left side being just a little bit larger than our right. Okay, so we have more leaves that are a little bit bigger on our left and we have smaller ones on our right.
So moving on, we are going to be using our round tip brush and we're going to be using our fuchsia and then some baby blue. So we're going to be starting off with our fuchsia or our magenta. If you don't have magenta, you could go ahead and make a pink um, and that should be fine. So if you mix a little bit of white with your um, red, maybe a little bit of yellow in there, then you could totally go ahead and use that. So I'm going to grab some of this magenta. I'm going to make sure that I add enough water in there to make it nice and soft. Again, using my round tip brush. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of white. So I want to have both colors on my brush, both magenta and white. See that? I have both colors loaded up on my brush. And we're going to be going over this very lightly to create the effect of some clouds. We're going to be sticking primarily to the bottom of this area where we put our pink originally or our magenta. We are going to go over our yellow slightly as well. And we're going to just go up a little bit into the blue, okay, but only a little bit. So that way it looks like it's a combined picture and we don't have it separated in levels. So one level, two levels. We want to make it look like it's all incorporated into the same photo. So we're going to start off with that pink and we're going to start right in the middle. Okay, actually, let's start right here next to our sun. We're going to come in lightly and we're going to press a little bit more, keep it away from the canvas to make a lighter line. And we're going to press a little bit harder and we're just going to scrape that. So notice that I'm pressing harder to get my wider lines. I'm moving my brush away from my canvas a little bit to get my thinner lines. Okay, I'm coming back with a little bit more white since I still have some pink on my brush. And I'm gonna come in and add another bit of that highlight over here at the end. Okay, and there we go. We have our first level of highlight there. Next, we're gonna make it look as if our clouds are coming in from the top here and they're going down slanted towards the left. Okay, so we are gonna come in from this side, maybe scrape, pick up a little bit more fuchsia, a little bit more white, so we get more of a, a pure fuchsia color. Okay, come back with a little bit of that white. Okay, and I'm making it a little bit darker towards my right, a little bit lighter towards my left. Again, I'm coming in with a little bit more white. If I wanted to make it a little darker, I could go in there with just plain fuchsia and outline it or that plain magenta and outline it. Okay, and you know what? I think I wanna add just a little bit more white to that. And I'm gonna add another layer below. Make it a little bit thicker towards the top. And I'm scratching in a little bit of white in there. It looks like it's a solid pink and I don't want that. I want it to look a little messier. So I'm coming in with some of that white and I'm starting to scratch it in. And there we go. We're coming back with a little bit more of that fuchsia or magenta. I keep calling it fuchsia. I apologize <laughs> with our magenta. And I'm going to start to kind of add some lines into this and make it a little bit darker towards the bottom. I am going to be rubbing some white on there as well. This is just for right now, making it look as if it's going into that corner over here. So now I'm coming in with some of that white and I'm scraping that in as well. I 
And we can start to add some dabs of that pink at the edges so our clouds start to look a little bit more scattered. Okay, so we're grabbing some dabs. Okay, little by little, we're gonna start increasing our white and we're gonna start adding a little bit more to this. We're gonna make our white just a little bit more prominent, make it stand out a little bit more. Okay, we're gonna make some white clouds also. And those are also wiggly lines. Again, if you want it thicker, press a little harder and your brush will open up and give you all of that design. Okay, so I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna dab a little bit of this white right here. We're making it look like it's a little fluffier there in this area. We're gonna start to dab some dots and creating a shape kind of like a wave too. Um, except that this is going to be done with dots. So it's going to be the same form, same shape that we're using. Okay, so it's going to be just as wavy, except that instead of making a line, we're going to be making it in dots. So there we go. Once we are done with our fuchsia, the color we're gonna be using is gonna be a baby blue. So we're gonna come in. We're gonna actually dry this. I'm gonna wait for you guys to catch up. I'm gonna give you guys a second to catch up just so you guys can take your time with your clouds. I'm gonna give you guys about another two minutes and then we'll be moving on. Moving on, I'm going to be using my round tip brush and the next color, like I mentioned before, we're going to be using is going to be a baby blue. So we are going to be invading part of this pink um, and we are going to be leaving a lot of space right here. Not a lot, but a, a quite a bit of space up here um, so that we can draw in some stars after. So your baby blue is going to be some of this white mixed in with your blue. Okay, and we have a baby blue there. Make sure that you have that nice and soft. 
You added some water to keep the moisture. Okay. And the next color we're going to be grabbing with this is going to be some of our white. Okay, so we're going to come in first and then starting into part of our pink line, we're going to grab some of that baby blue and we're going to start to scratch it into our pink slightly. Okay, if you want to grab a little bit of white so it looks like it's blending in better. See how the white makes it look like it's part of the same piece. It doesn't just look like we have some random blue coming out. Okay. We're going to have that coming in from the sides there. Next, we're coming in with some of that baby blue. And we're going to start to slowly brush it in to the side of our sky here. If you want to grab some of that white and just kind of create some movement, create, make it look like if the clouds are moving downwards. That is something we can do there. I'm gonna add a little bit more blue to the pink there as well. And we're gonna just kind of curve it in like that. So we're going straight and then we're creating a little curve there, okay? So we're creating a curve and then we're gonna bring it back down into part of this pink. Okay, and see how we're starting to combine both of them. You can also go in there with a little bit of a darker blue. I'm gonna add a variety of colors. Again, this is more bent and I am leaving plenty of space on top. Okay, and then I'm gonna come in and just scratch a little bit of white. Hopefully our paint is still nice and wet so that we get a nice gradient of colors. We get a nice combination, variety of colors. Once we've done that, then we're going to come in with our white and our baby blue, and we're going to start to create some dots, just like we did here. We're going to do the similar effect up on top here. So right where we have this little arch that I was telling you about, we're going to start to dab all of our dots right there. Okay, and we want some white. Hopefully you still have some blue in your brush. And that's gonna start to give you a variety of colors. It's gonna give you both baby blue and white combined when you dab. And we're gonna bring this slightly into our pink a little bit. Make it look like we have our pink sky turning into a blue sky. We're also gonna add some of those baby blue lines down to the bottom here. Come back with a little bit more white. And add another little bit of blue down here. And that way it blends in with the clouds that we originally did there in pink. Right. And there we go. We have our awesome little sky there. Next, when you are done with your sky, we're going to be grabbing our detail brush. 
and we're picking up some white. And we're going to begin to do some stars on top. So you can do big stars, you can do little stars, you can vary them around. And we're going to start to fill this blue section with these little dots. All right, and next we're going to be using our detail brush, dipping it into the white one final time, and off to the right-hand corner, we're going to put in our signature. After this, you guys are done. Thank you for joining me today. Hope you guys have a good one.